I'm Jeanette Keynes from Jewelry Arts Inc. And in this video, I'm gonna show you fine silver granulation. I'm gonna show you how to really master the torch technique that makes it all possible. Look how pretty that looks. You wanna get a little like close mm -hmm. over there? Look at what Susie has done. It's kind of like fucking amazing. Funny, a little to watch them like do Okay. Yeah, it's beautiful. I find it very, I mean, I guess because I'm OCD, but I, I find these things very mesmerizing and it's so nice to just get absorbed in what you're doing. It's a very peaceful <laughs> state. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You yes. know what I mean? Because it's like, mm -hmm. I right. feel like I enter this little microcosmos and exactly. I'm just there and it's me and the granules and it's lovely. <laughs> okay, so there's my philosophy for the day. So one thing that we were talking about before that I want to mention either again or for the first time, depending on whether we were filming or not, is that it is important as you're setting these up that they stay moist, <laughs> that they be moisturized. Because, you know, you're sitting in a studio, which a lot of times is warm or the fan's going, whatever, and the water's evaporating. So like, especially this little section in the center, if that thing gets completely dry, they'll just run. You know what I mean? They'll just roll down to the edge or if, if poked. So now we're at the point where we're ready to glue, but before we glue, I'm gonna add a tiny bit of water to make sure everything is moist. Okay. Because if it's totally dry and I touch it with the brush, it might just roll away. Or I'll end up with too much glue because what I really want is for the granules to be moist. I add a tiny bit of glue and so then the glue kind of spreads through the moisture and you know, like spreads it around kind of a thing with a minimal amount. Did I mention a minimal amount? Yes, I did. <laughs> um, so I'm going to make sure, just like that, to add a tiny bit. It's mainly this that's the at-risk <laughs> granules, you know what I mean? The stuff that's sitting over here, I'm not saying it couldn't move, but it's resting against the wire, so it's much less likely to do something naughty, which is why we love to put a wire on first and then granulate. So I'm gonna cut open this new unused bottle of G-Glue, specially formulated for exactly this purpose. You use it for fine silver and you use it for 22 karat gold granulation. And you know, sometimes people hear glue and they're like, glue, what the hell? The glue is just to hold the granules in place as we pick it up from wherever you set it up and put it in the kiln. That's its only purpose. You know, it's not gonna hold them in place permanently. Uh, we were saying before, you can't like glue it and then take this and like put it in your bag and carry it around, whatever. It's like, it's just dumb. And it's organic glue. So basically it burns away completely when it's in the kiln, doesn't interfere with the fusing. And this is specially formulated uh, to hold it on a curved surface as well. So it, you need it, you need glue. <laughs> Gotta have glue. Got it. <laughs> Give it a good shake. And because, minimal amount, I usually just put a drop on top of the bottle like that and then dip my brush in it. If you drop it on here, that will actually be way too much. So one on the bright side, uh, as I am a pusher for my glue, this bottle of glue, unless you granulate every minute, every day for the rest of your life, will probably last you forever because you're using such tiny amounts. So you see what I mean? Like I'm gonna dip my brush in and I'm going to like, I'll touch that spot and I'll touch the other end, move that over a little bit. That center section is glued. Do you see what wow. I'm saying? Just it's like points. Yes, no, I, mean, I know I keep repeating the same thing, but I feel like no matter how much I tell people it's a tiny amount, then when I show them, they're like, oh, that's way less than I thought. So with the rest of it, I don't need to touch every single spot by any means. I'm probably gonna just touch the little peaks on each one of these so that it kind of spreads around. Again, it's supported by the wire, so I don't want anything to move around, but it's not super likely to go kaflooey unless we do something crazy, which we're not going to. You see how it just kind of sucks in there if it's a little moist? Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't know if I started here or here, but there you go. 
Okay. So now what you do is you have to let it dry completely. I usually tell people when you're sure it's dry, give it five more minutes. Because <laughs> if there's any moisture whatsoever in this and you put it in the kiln, that moisture will instantly boil and your carefully laid granules will, just like with enamel, if you're enameling and there's any moisture, you put it in the kiln, you know, everything will fly everywhere. So you don't want to do that. There might be some liquid in the in this. Underneath, you mean? Yeah, what, we'll, what we will do is we'll probably let it dry here for a minute or two and then we'll like very carefully move it um, near the kiln. Okay. And you know, so if there's any water trapped underneath or whatever, we'll, we will make sure that we are completely dry before we put it in the kiln. And I'm gonna show you my OCD method of putting it in the kiln, which it's mainly just about not taking your eyes off of it. If you take your eyes off of it, your wrist goes boop. Okay is not good in this particular case. Okay, so we'll give it a couple minutes and we'll come back to it. Okay, okay? ready? I'm ready now. So the appropriate mental state to be in <laughs> is that's the only thing that exists. If someone calls your name, if the doorbell rings, if your phone rings, whatever. When you are picking that up and putting it in the kiln, there is no world. It is but you and your disc because if you get distracted and you look up, literally you can tilt it. And yes, the glue is supposed to hold it, but maybe glue didn't reach every single granule on there. And so even though you've glued, you want to really like be with it, nice and level and sit it down. Like we we're talking before about like a pizza. It's like you can't take a pizza when you're about to bake it and kind of just go like, you know, you have to gently place it. Okay. I know I make a big fuss about it, but it's so easy to do. So I give everyone a big dissertation, so hopefully they get tired of hearing it, and then, you know, there you go. Make sure I've got it, right? Pick it up, I'm staring at it. Nothing else exists in this whole world but our beautiful little desk. And gently place it on a hot spot. Oh, I already saw something. One yeah. granule moved, but that's okay. So we have two choices. When one granule moves, we can go ahead and fuse everything else down and then replace that granule, or we can take it out and they'll all move. So if it were me, oh, I, we're, a, we're just gonna <laughs> we're just gonna fuse the stuff that's down in there and replace we one take granule. The one that moved out, or is it I'm going to start by fusing this down first because if we try to get that out, uh, think, naughty things will one, happen. One yes. errant granule is not gonna kill me. Yes. But if it was a scenario where the one errant granule would kill us, we would, ha I would have just immediately before I even, you know what I mean, I would have just taken it back out. Okay? So I'm gonna spark it up. And I don't know, Alexis, you may wanna come I over behind, behind me. But this is gonna be the identical, identical, this is <laughs> going to be the identical process to when we fuse the wire down. We're gonna get the whole thing good and hot. I'm gonna wait for the edges to get shiny and melt a little bit, and then I'm gonna push that molten metal underneath the granules using the feather tip, which is the end of the flame. Okay. <laughs> Let me just do, uh, <laughs> does it wobble around? Okay, so you put the lid there to cast a shadow, helps you to see and keeps the heat in. Elbow up in the air, flame straight up and down. Start circling. And when I see the edges of the back sheet get shiny and melt a little bit, that's when I'm gonna go in there and do my thing. Oh, you see that? You see that little shine? What? And then we're gonna do that. <gasps> Granulation, baby. So I can do like one more pass through there, but you know, you don't want to go too far. Sometimes it's better to like do some, take it out and look mm -hmm. because I did see it flow, you know, underneath. So I think we're done, but I'm going to just do ever so lightly one more pass so that you can see it again. You see that? Mm -hmm. And then see that? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then see that? Boop. That's it. Okay. So then you take it out, you let it cool and you look at it really carefully because when you're, when you're granulating, you know, sure, lots of times you do it, you put it down, they're all done, you're finished. 
but it's not uncommon at all to like get most of them down, but this one little section needs a little more. And in that case, we just put it back in the kiln. Okay. So it's no big deal. It happens. Okay. Look how pretty that looks. Because also, we, if we want to replace that one granule we lost, we'll have to glue that in place. But what I would suggest is we'll pause and check everything else and see if anything else needs any action so that we know we know our plan when we go in there. And then we're going to glue that one granule back in place, put it back in there, and we'll fuse it. Check it from the side a little bit. But like I was looking at it before, I mean, like you can see all those beautiful little yeah, bags. Yeah, I looked at it from the side. Um, we well now, now you know they're on um we'll also take a back row you know and and try to get a really good shot just to show the little connections but it, it looks good to me so i'm gonna just put a little granule here with a tiny bit of wood because see what happened this one that was supposed to go right there just kind of can you point at it again right here now if you didn't know that that's what the pattern was supposed to look like you wouldn't know that that's wrong but we're going to go ahead and add another granule there so all I'm gonna do is just dip a granule in a little bit of water and then add a tiny bit of glue, stick it in the kiln. Okay, just like so. Like it was always meant to be there. See if our glue is dried up, it has, so. Glue, I'm gonna mop off some of that extra water because it doesn't need to be that wet that whole section, just a little bit. So another thing that impatient people can do, instead of just letting it air dry, they can place it in front of the kiln and they can put their lid on top because it creates a little warming chamber. And then I get probably that other crappy lid put it here so that that gets hot and you also don't roast over the kiln and you can just switch them back and forth every couple minutes and this will dry a lot faster because you've made a little warming chamber. Okay. You don't want to take it and put it right on top of the lid because the lid can be quite hot and that can actually be hot enough to just sizzle your glue out. Okay? Oh, okay. So we're going to do this for like a minute or two and then we'll stick it in the kiln and fuse it. Okay. <laughs> so this is the spot right here where we added the granule. I'm going to stick it in, fuse a little more. Even though we're only doing one, the procedure is still the same though. I got to get the whole thing good and hot and push it underneath that granule. But I don't need to necessarily flow it all over the whole thing. I just need to make sure I see it flow under the section where we've added the granule. Okay? And I'll just point to it again. This is the spot right here that that I need to make sure we flow. So lid flame straight up and down. Build up that heat. see that and then I'm gonna go whoop done okay you don't have to make the dumb noises if you don't want but somehow I always have a sound effect uh, ready to go with these things that's it it's over bye <laughs> see you next hey. week oh wow time oh, there it is in all its glory so essentially when you're checking granulation what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna tilt it, uh, I do it under my magnifier, uh, and look for the little, we call it a neck. There's gonna be a tiny connection of metal between the granule and the back sheet. And you'll also see little connections between each granule, or maybe not each granule, but some of the granules. But although that helps, what you need to make sure of is you have the connection between the granule and the back sheet. Because let's say a couple granules had connections to each other, but if they're not well attached to the back sheet, they could just peel off in a section. Do you know what I'm saying? So, so that's not enough, if you know what I mean. Yes, who hasn't had that happen, right? So 
I believe these are all beautifully attached because they look good to me and I saw the metal flow and, and all those things, but we will take it and just like, we're gonna go under the magnifier and we're gonna just slowly tilt it so that we can look under each of the clusters and each of the sections and make sure that we see the connections that we're looking to see. Okay.